Hello, my name is Manu Parimi and I'm an Applications Engineer at Plexin. I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial video on configuring the digital and PWM inputs on the Plex RT box. In this video, we will create a simple model using the digital in, PWM capture and PWM out components from the Plex RT box target support library and observe the waveforms on the Plex scope to show how these two signals differ. To make the appropriate I.O. connections, we will use a digital breakout board with jumper wires connecting the digital outputs to the digital inputs. A loopback cable can also be used instead. The RTBOX target support library includes two different classes of digital input signals. The digital in component represents general purpose inputs that are updated once per model time step. This component is not suitable to capture PWM signals as their time resolution is limited to the discretization time of the model. For real-time hardware in the loop applications where accurate PWM sampling is required, the PWM capture component is used. PWM capture component decouples the resolution of a sensed PWM input from the simulation time step by utilizing the 7.5 nanosecond time resolution of the FPGA. The RTBOX supports 32 digital input channels. Make note that any digital input pin can either be a regular digital in or a PWM capture. Now we will add a digital in component and a PWM capture component to compare their performance. Create a new model and place a digital in component from the RTBOX library onto the schematic. Assign it to channel 0. Then add a PWM capture component from the RTBOX library and assign it to channel 1. For an offline simulation, meaning a simulation run on Plex, you need to define an averaging interval in seconds which is equal to the model step. You can leave this as default value for this model. Using a multiplexer component, connect the outputs of these components to a scope. Next, we will generate an identical PWM signal on digital outputs 0 and 1. Drag and drop a PWM out block from the Plex RTBOX library. Assign it to channel 0 and 1. Leave all the other values as default and click apply. Add a constant block representing the duty ratio and set it to 0. Drag and drop a signal selector block and set the input width as 1 and the output width as 1, 1. Connect the PWM out block to the constant block via the signal selector so that both PWM outputs have the same duty and settings. Save the model to a location of your choice. Open the Code Options window and navigate to the Parameter Inlining tab. We'll use the Parameter Inlining feature so that we can adjust the duty ratio dynamically during the real-time simulation. Drag and drop the constant block from the schematic into the exceptions list to adjust the duty ratio on the fly while the real-time simulation is running on the RT box. From the General tab, set the discretization step size as one-tenth of the switching period and accept the changes. Next, select your RT box from the target tab and build the model. Either using a digital breakout board or a loopback cable, connect the digital outs 0 and 1 to digital ins 0 and 1. If you don't have a digital breakout board or a loopback cable, connect the digital pins on the front panel using jumper wires. Refer to the front panel tab of the RTBOX web interface or the RTBOX manual for detailed pinout information. Then, connect to the RTBOX via the external mode. Activate auto-triggering and set the trigger channel to digital in channel 0 at a trigger level of 0.5. From the cursors tab, Change the signal type to discrete. 
Compare the digital in and PWM capture component output signals. Notice that the digital in component records the input signal as either a 0 or 1, representing the digital input status just prior to the model step, while the PWM capture produces a value in between 0 and 1. This value represents the percentage of time the digital input signal was active over the previous model step. When we change the duty cycle from 0 to 0 0.05, we observe that this change in duty cycle does not affect the digital input signals as the model step size wasn't small enough to capture this change accurately. However, since the PWM capture component samples the digital input at the FPGA sample rate of 7.5 nanoseconds, the accuracy of the duty cycle sensing is no longer limited by the model time step and contains additional duty cycle information compared to the digital input block. Observe how the area under the curve representing average on time during one model step time is larger for a duty ratio of 0.05 compared to a duty ratio of 0. Since the PWM capture component produces a value in between 0 and 1, this component must be used in conjunction with the hybrid switch module from the power module section of the Plex library browser. Let's investigate how this looks in a practical real-time model. Here's the circuit of an H-bridge converter. We are using a PWM capture block to capture PWM signals from the external controller. We can look under the mask of this block to look at the offline implementation. As mentioned previously, for an offline simulation, we need to define an averaging interval in seconds, which is equal to the model step. In this case, it's two microseconds. And here are the hybrid switches. If you look under the mask of the switch, you can explore the subcycle average implementation of this module. Let's run the simulation offline with both the controller and the plant modeled on Plex. We observe that the time averaged value of the PWM input of the previous model step is applied as the effective duty cycle of the hybrid switch module. To quickly summarize, we have compared the difference in digital in and PWM capture library blocks and learned the advantages of using the PWM capture block for capturing the PWM signals. PWM capture blocks offer a resolution of 7.5 nanoseconds and must be used in conjunction with the hybrid switch module. This concludes the tutorial video on configuring the digital and PWM inputs on the Plex RT box. For more videos and other information, please visit our website at www.plexim.com. Thank you for watching.